We are in the field here uh, today to take a look at a fire that occurred in 2013 near Prescott, Arizona. And I am going to be your host. I am Lisa Floyd Hanna, the science director of the Natural History Institute. And my background is uh, in fire ecology. And for many years, my students and I have wandered through fires in the Southwest. The fire that we want to be talking about today is called the Dosi Fire. And you're seeing a little bit of that fire here today. And we're going to talk about some specific trends that we have been monitoring over time since that fire. The fire occurred in June of 2013. And like all pinyon juniper and chaparral fires, it was a very hot fire. In other words, it was the way pinyon juniper and chaparral ought to burn. In dry conditions with high winds, it was a stand replacing fire, which means all the vegetation would have been eliminated, except perhaps in patches. Um, but primarily the, the stands are removed and that kind of resets the clock for return of vegetation over time. There were three different kinds of vegetation types that burned in this fire. There was interior chaparral, which is what we're really seeing here behind you is burned interior chaparral. But there is also pinyon juniper woodlands or forests that were very dense. And then an interface of those two kinds of ecosystems where the pinyon juniper forest and the interior chaparral meet. For a fire ecologist, this was a really exciting uh, fire because it had burned areas that had not burned for a long time, probably hundreds of years. And the characteristics of the fire are what we think are normal for these two ecosystems. So here we're standing primarily in a chaparral area. And chaparral uh, species are primarily perennial shrubs, which tend to re-sprout vigorously after fire. In fact, after this fire occurred in June, I think I was here in early August, and already almost every species seemed to be re-sprouting. So let's take a quick look at what some of these species are. Over here are scrub oaks, Quercus turbinella, and other oak species. Here is Rus trilobata. And over here is Cercocarpus montanus, mountain mahogany. So between the scrub oaks, the roos, and the mountain mahogany, those are some of the major species that we have here. The Dosi fire also burned pinyon juniper woodlands. And as you can see here, this is Pinus edulis variety phallix, which is a type of pinyon common in the Prescott area and in the Mogollon Highlands in general. Very different, though, from Pinus edulis variety edulis, which is found on the Colorado Plateau. And here we don't know very much about its response to fire. We do know that if a stand replacing fire like the Dosi fire burns uh, through a pinyon juniper woodland that it is less likely that pinyon will germinate before the shrubs resprout. So that there will probably be competition for microsites for pinyon and for juniper and for Arizona cypress because of the prolific resprouting of the shrubs. However, it's more likely that pinyon and juniper will return to these habitats within a few decades. And we're hoping to see that soon in the Dosi fire. At this point, we have not seen pinyon or juniper 
returning to these sites. Although you could see even on this tree that pinyon is producing cones and is producing seeds in the area. When the fire burned through this area, many forbs germinated and it was this purple mat of glandularia. It was absolutely beautiful. And many of the forbs are not forbs that we typically see, so that their seeds are very likely in the seed bank of the chaparral. There's been some very fine studies done uh, by John Keeley from the USGS that have compared the germination of those forbs in what we call the interior chaparral, like you're seeing here, with the chaparral uh, situation in California, which is more on the coast, um, and showing that we have a very different kind of forb diversity in this area, even though a lot of our shrub species are similar. After the flush of forbs, we began to see uh, a preponderance of certain species here. My students and I set out a series of transects that we return to year after year after year. And we'd look at the cover of each of these species coming in. So for example, with this oak, which you can clearly see was a larger oak by the burned um, limbs there that persist, is now a little more uh, bushy and has heavier cover and a lot of biomass as it continues to grow. And to me, one of the most interesting trends that we saw was that the composition of the perennial shrubs before the fire is very different from the composition of those shrubs after fire, even though the landscape looks very similar. In fact, if you didn't have these burnt limbs, it would be hard for you to even know there was a fire seven years after. So we began to look at more of the details of what's coming in after fire. And one of the things that it was very, very startling is that certain species are not responding well, whereas other species are more or less taking over. So I want to talk for a minute about the winners and the losers after these fire, chaparral fires. One of the species that we're really interested in here, Circocarpus montanus, has some special biological effects. It is called actinorhizal, which means that within its root system are fibrous bacteria called franchia, and those franchia fix nitrogen from the air. So as you probably know, most of the atmosphere consists of N2 gas, and that N2 gas is very inert for biological organisms. S bacteria are the only organisms that can fix that nitrogen from the air into nitrates and nitrites, which are then available to plants and ultimately available then to animals that eat those plants. So that these bacteria are key, very, very important organisms. The long filamentous bacteria that share the root system of Circocarpus are very important, particularly in these woody chaparral systems as they add nitrogen to these plants in pockets and that nitrogen then extends out around each shrub species. Back to the fire then. After the Dosi fire, our monitoring showed that Circocarpus and one other uh, actinorhizal species were actually on the decline, that they weren't returning, whereas Quercus turbinella was German, our sprouting great guns was just wonderful um, and very prolific. So we began to see a shift in dominance towards oak away from actinorhizal species. And to me, this is one of the key uh, biological stories 
after fire because while we look at the biomass and we go wow it's returned to the same biomass very very quickly the characteristics of that biomass in particular the nitrogen um, is being shown to be very different we also looked at soils um, in areas that were burned and areas that were unburned and to see if the nitrogen components of the soils differ across those two sites and indeed they do in the burned areas where there's less actinorhizal presence the total nitrogen and nitrate was much lower four years after fire so that's a quick trip uh, through the chaparral Thanks for listening today as we talk about the amazing fire regime in the interior chaparral. I appreciate your time and I'd like to guide you to the Natural History Institute's website where you can find all sorts of interesting videos, field notes, um, and other information about the natural ecosystems of the Mogollon Highlands and elsewhere. That's naturalhistoryinstitute.org. Thank you.